Hey, Mike and Hannah here with Delta. Today we're showing you how to install a single handle kitchen faucet with a side spray. We're using the Pilar as our model today, but this installation video can be used for other widespread kitchen faucets from Delta. A widespread faucet has the handle and spout separate, not on the same discussion. Yeah, so if your faucet looks like this one here and has a separate handle and spout, then this is the video you're gonna want. It's a really easy installation and you only need a few tools to get it done. You're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver, and we recommend a longer screwdriver because it makes it that much easier to work behind the sink. You're gonna need an adjustable wrench, some safety glasses, and probably a flashlight, and a couple of tools that Delta's include in the box for you. And we're also going to flush our lines for this installation, so go ahead and get a bucket or a pot and maybe just a towel for any light water cleanup. Lastly, if you're installing this on a countertop or sink that's not smooth, you may just want a little bit of silicone to ensure a tight seal as well. So with that said, let's get started. Our sink has a three-hole configuration. The faucet we're installing today has three components, a valve, a spout, and a veggie sprayer. This particular model does come with a soap dispenser sometimes, so if you do buy one that has that option, you will need a four-hole sink configuration. So the first step is installing the spout. Now the spout comes with a gasket and a trim ring. You want to seat the gasket into the trim ring, making sure it's flush, nothing's sticking out. And then we're going to set that in our middle mounting hole. And this can be in any orientation you would like. I just prefer to have the spout in the middle. Next, we're going to take our spout. And you'll notice it has an F here. That's so that Mike, who's under the sink helping me install, will know that this is the front. We'll feed this down. Just like so. If you don't have a helper to help you install under the sink, this will fall forward. Just make sure you rest it gently. Perfect. Okay. Now since we have a stainless steel sink that tends to be thin, we'll use a stabilization plate. This I'll hand to Mike and he'll install this under the sink before he installs the mounting nut. Here you go. All right, thank you. So like Santa said, this is going to give us a little bit of additional support as we mount that faucet up top. Now, you'll notice it has two sides. One side has some holes in it. I actually like to mount this down, even though it doesn't make a difference, just so no water collects in it at all. Now, with my stabilization plate, I want to feed my spout connection through the center hole, since that's the same hole we have the faucet in on the top of the deck of the sink. After that, I'm going to feed my washer, followed by my nut over that same connection, and then push all three up tight to the bottom of the deck and begin hand threading that nut on the bottom of my faucet shank. Again, it should go easy, so don't force this. I'm going to spin it all the way up to the tight to the bottom of the deck. All right, that's getting nice and snug. All right, now before I tighten up those locking screws, I want to make sure that everything looks nice and centered and my stabilization plate is matching up with the holes above it. Now I'm going to use my long screwdriver. And I'm going to begin by tightening my first locking nut. All right, and then over to my second one. That feels good. And I always like to go back to the first one just to make sure nothing loosened up when I was tightening that other side. All right, that should be good. All right, that feels nice and tight. So now we can move on to installing the valve, which is how you'll turn the faucet on and off. This comes with another gasket. This one has a backing on it. There is a sticky side. So we're going to pull the backing off because all we want is the outer ring. So we'll pull that off. We're going to pop this out. It is very sticky. We're going to take our valve and we'll slide this on sticky side up. Just like so. And you'll want to take your time with this to make sure that it seats. Perfect. That looks good. Now when we install this in the mounting hole, you want to make sure that this mounting stud is facing the back and that your cartridge stem is facing towards you. Okay, now I'm going to have Mike tighten it up from under the sink. To mount the cartridge to the sink, we're going to begin by using this mounting bracket. 
the included wrench, and then also this mounting nut. And I always find it's easiest to make sure the nut is placed inside the wrench before we get going because it makes things a little bit easier. Also, there's two things I want to point out on this bracket. The first is you'll notice one side is open. Now, this open side is where all the tubes and everything are going to fit as we feed this up to the bottom of the sink, so I make sure nothing's getting pinched or crimped at all. Also, one side of the bracket has these raised bumps on it. I want to make sure these bumps are facing up to the bottom of the sink as well. So I'm going to begin by taking my bracket and feeding it up onto the mounting shank. And I'm going to use my wrench to move my nut all the way up the stud until that bracket sits tightly against the bottom of my stabilization plate. All right, now as I get that bracket tight against the stabilization plate, I want to make sure again that none of my tubes or my supply lines are being pinched by it. And I have a good tight connection to the bottom of the stabilization plate. I'm going to give it the last couple cranks of the wrench just to make sure I've got a nice tight connection. There, that should be good. So next what we want to do is connect our PEC supply lines to our stub outs. Now on this step we want to make sure we connect the cold to the cold and the hot to the hot. You'll see Delta's made this easy by color coding the ends of our supply lines. Blue for cold, red for hot. In general cold's on the right side of your stub out so I'm going to go with the cold first. And with these supply lines we have a little bit of extra tubing here. So there's really two ways you can go about connecting to your stub out. The first is looping it. Now you'll notice when I make this loop, we don't want this loop to be too tight. It's about eight inches across or more is what we're going for. And here it looks like I'm going to be a little bit too tight. So I can actually do more of a spiral so I don't crimp the tube at all. I bring it down to my stub out and then I begin hand threading it onto the top of my valve. Now once I have that hand tight, I want to give it one more turn with a wrench. And you'll notice on one face of the nut, has a little diamond pattern here. And that's what I can use as my reference point to make sure I get a full 360 degree revolution of that nut. Here we go, and all I want is one full revolution. I don't want to over tighten this connection. With that in place, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the hot side. Now we're gonna be flushing our lines. Now this is important to do whether or not this is a new construction or remodel because we wanna make sure there's no debris that's built up in our supply lines while we were installing the faucet. This could cause like a flow issue. So we just wanna make sure everything's nice and clear. Now to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my cold and my hot supply lines and then have Hannah up on top of the sink turn the faucet to the full mixed position. This is gonna cause water to come out of this outlet tube for about 30 seconds, washing all the debris out, turn everything off and we're ready to move on. So, to begin, the first thing I want to do is make sure the faucet is in the off position up top. Tana's already got that confirmed. Next, I'm going to turn my stub outs to the on position. And then I'm going to take my bucket and put it into place under the outlet tube. And I want to make sure that outlet tube is inside the bucket to make sure all the water is going to go in there. And everything looks good down here, so go ahead and turn that on, Hannah. Okay, so even though we don't have a handle on, we can still turn the water on. We're gonna push the stem on our cartridge all the way up to full mix position, which will give us a mix of hot and cold. All right, that should be good. All right, perfect. I'm gonna set my bucket off to the side now. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my stub outs back into the off position because we have a little bit more work to do up top. Okay, great. I think we're ready to move on. Now that we have our lines flushed, our next step is to connect our outlet tube to our spout connector. To do this, I'm gonna use my outlet tube here and push it into this connector and then lock it in with that little blue clip. So, taking my outlet tube, pushing it firmly into the side of my spout connector, and I wanna push it all the way down until that fitting sits tight against the connector itself. And then this little blue clip simply comes across onto the tube, snaps into place above the fitting, that gives us a nice, nice tight connection. So now we're going to finish the install of the valve. We are working with some small pieces on this step, so I have a dish towel here. I'm going to set it in the sink. In case I drop anything, it'll catch it. Nothing will go down the drain. Okay, now we're going to take our sleeve, and this will have a sticker in it. 
You can either fold it down or just remove the sticker completely, which is what I'm going to do. Set it to the side, and we'll take it and we'll place it over our valve. And we're going to turn this until it's tight. Don't over tighten it. Should just take about three or four rotations. Okay, that's nice and tight. Now we're going to move on to our handle. And this goes on one way only. And I found it's easier if you take your cartridge stem and if you move it back so it's straight up, it's just easier to install the handle. We're going to go ahead and place this just like that. It should go right into the hole in the handle. Now we're going to take our set screw and our hex wrench and we will screw this in. Okay, that's nice and tight. And now we'll take our button and we'll install this. It only goes one way. You're gonna have the hot on the left side. And we'll simply stick this in, just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure that everything feels good. Turn it on and off. Looks great. Now we'll move on to installing the veggie sprayer. The veggie sprayer comes with a support assembly and a trim ring. We'll simply put the support assembly in the trim ring, seat it in the mounting hole, and then we'll take our veggie sprayer and we will feed it down to Mike. Perfect. And he's going to tighten it up. With the sprayer hose, I'm going to use my plastic mounting nut and feed my hose through the center of the nut and then run this nut up onto the bottom of the sprayer shank to secure it to the deck. Now this plastic nut should thread on there pretty easy, so don't force it. I'm gonna go ahead and spin it all the way up to the bottom of that stabilization plate. All right, now I've got it snug on there. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down the last little bit. All right, perfect. Next, we're gonna connect our spray hose to our spout connector. Now the first thing with the spout connector is you'll notice there's a blue plug in the bottom of it. To remove this plug, I'm going to pull the blue clip to the side and then just simply pull the plug out the bottom, set that to the side. I'm gonna reinsert my sprayer hose into the spout connector. And one thing I wanna point out about the sprayer hose is this is gonna move up and down as you use your faucet. So I wanna make sure it's not wrapped around any of my supply lines or anything else under here. I'm gonna go ahead and push that into the bottom of the spout connector and then Clip that blue clip right back into place. It should snap there. Give it a slight tug down to make sure I have a good connection and everything looks good. Now, one pro tip I will do want to point out is I don't want to throw this plug away because if for any reason I decide that I don't want to use my veggie sprayer with my faucet, all I have to do is pull this blue clip to the side, remove my spray hose, reinsert the plug, clip that back into place, and my faucet will function as normal. So we've got everything connected down here. Our last step is gonna to be to check for leaks. To do this, I'm gonna turn my cold and my hot stub out to the on position. And with those on, I'm gonna have Hannah turn the faucet to the full mix position up top. All right, Hannah, go ahead. Okay, it's on. Okay, everything's looking good. I'm looking around here, the sprayer hose connection. Just make sure everything looks good, no drips at all. I think we're all set to move up top and clean up. Okay, so we checked for any leaks under the sink at all of our connections and everything looks good up here. Yeah, it was pretty easy. It was really easy. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to Delta Customer Service. Enjoy your new faucet.